What's doing, everybody? I'm Alec Lace. Thank you for watching First Class Fatherhood. Today's guest on the podcast is reality TV superstar Rob Mariano, better known as Boston Rob. You know him from Survivor, and no contestant has ever spent more time on Survivor's Islands than Boston Rob. He's won the show before, he's been a runner-up on the show, and he and his wife Amber have competed on The Amazing Race twice. They met on Survivor, so it's an honor to have him on the podcast today. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below, tap the like, and let's jump into it right now with Boston Rob on First Class Fatherhood. Joining me now, First Class Father, Boston Rob, Rob Mariano. Welcome to First Class Fatherhood. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me, brother. All right, let's start it like this. How many kids do you have and how old are they? Uh, I have four daughters and Lucia's 11, just turned 11. Uh, Karina's nine, Issa's eight, and Adelina is six. Wow, very cool. I got four myself. We had our three boys, then we got the girl on the fourth try there. So if we didn't get her on four, we'd have five by now. You going for that boy or are you all done? Wow, you're braver than me, man. <laughs> they, they always ask me, you're going to try for a boy. I said, how do you think I got four girls? <laughs> well, listen, what type of sports or activities are the girls into? Uh, they do all kinds of stuff. They play soccer. They love to play golf and, uh, you know, gymnastics and stuff around the house. And uh, they're pretty active kids for the most part. They do uh, – they play games at school also. They do track and field and that kind of stuff. All right. If you could, Rob, please just take a minute here to hit my listeners with a little bit about your background and what you do. Yeah, so originally I'm from Boston. I live in Florida now, like any smart Bostonian does when they come of age. They move to Florida. And uh, my background is in construction, but I'm probably most well known for reality TV. I've competed on Survivor six times and also The Amazing Race twice and lots of other television shows. Yeah, it's been an incre uh, incredible journey that you've had there. You guys are uh, reality uh, TV royalty at this point. Your wife and yourself there, you've been married on national TV. A lot of coverage there. Uh, along this journey then, uh, Rob, I know you met your wife through the Survivor and all that, but how old were you then when you first became a dad and how did becoming a father kind of change your perspective on life? Yeah, so I got married when I was 29 and we waited a few years to have kids and that was kind of by design. We wanted to enjoy each other first. And then uh, my daughter, Lucia, was born in 2009. So, I don't know, do the math. I think I was probably around 33, 34. And it was amazing, you know. Uh, first time father, a lot of fun, lots of new things. You definitely, all the, all the skills that you learn in marriage are reinforced in parenting. You have to be patient. You have to be kind. You have to realize that things are not always going to go the way you want them to go. But, you know, when you realize that you're responsible for another life, you do whatever you can to make it awesome. Um, yeah, well, well said. What, what, what was it like for you then uh, to be competing on reality TV shows as a single guy as opposed to uh, when you were competing as a father? You know, luckily, because I met my wife on Survivor and she knew – what I was going through, I had a lot of support. I had her in my corner. It's not like somebody else whose wife is at home and doesn't understand what's going on out there. So she knew how hard it was for me. At the same time, I knew that I had somebody that I trusted to take care of my kids while I was away. And ultimately, what I was doing was kind of in a way like a business trip. I was there working to make their lives better. So as tough as it is, like all other parents that, you know, make sacrifices for the well-being of their kids, I kind of felt like that's what I was doing. Yeah, good stuff and a unique way to make a living for sure. And what, what was it like then for you to compete against your wife on reality TV? And then what was it like to compete with her on The Amazing Race? Yeah. So at the time when I was against her, she wasn't my wife yet, right? <laughs> so I didn't have to worry about offending her. But at the same time, we ended up at the end together. And I, I asked her to marry me before they announced who was the winner. So for a long time, she held it over my head. 
that she was the winner and I came in second place. So when I finally did win after, you know, 10 years later on Redemption Island on season 22, I didn't have to hear that in my own house anymore. Kind of even the playing field. The race was different. We competed as a team. But really on Survivor, we competed as a team too. We competed as a team to get to the end. They could only choose one winner on Survivor. But we knew ultimately if we ended up together that we both ended up winning anyway. So in a way, we kind of competed as a team on both shows. And that's how we live our life every day. You know, like everything that we do with parenting, with marriage, with everything, we don't always agree on everything. Sometimes we're different. But like in the game of life and in the game of Survivor, you have to be willing to adapt to your situation. Everybody's faced with like obstacles and challenges in their life. The people that are best able to adapt to their situations are the ones that don't just like survive, they thrive. Those are the people that figure it out. And luckily, you know, at the end of the day, we realize that we're on each other's team and we try to work towards a common goal. Yeah, very well said, Rob. And I wish that was the, the recurring theme throughout our country right now. We got a fatherless crisis in our country right now. We have, you know, I would love to see so much more support for our young couples in this country to get through those difficult moments early on in a marriage and, and, and with a newborn, with the challenges that that brings to get them past that hump because uh, we really do need stronger families in this country. I think if we had that, we'd see a lot of these problems that we're having really start to dissolve here. Yeah, I agree. It's work. Marriage is work and parenting is work. It's not easy. And I think you have to make a concerted effort to not give up and not quit. You know, it's easy to take the easy way out. If you don't, like you get somebody gets old, you get sick of them or like it's hard work. Like, yeah, of course you want to go play golf or go play hockey or do whatever you want to do. But you have to realize when you have a child, your responsibilities have to change. You have to be man enough or woman enough to take responsibility to do the right thing. And I agree with you. I think a lot of that is lacking right now in our country. But hopefully, you know, we can get back to it. Yeah, and you're right on there. I'm married 15 years myself with four kids like yourself there. And it's uh that there are ups and downs. That's why I focus here on the fatherhood aspect. I'm no marriage uh, uh, perfectionist myself here. We have our struggles, and I love working through it and getting stronger together. With each obstacle that we face, we seem to come out a little bit stronger on the other end. So it's definitely worth, the, uh, worth all the work. And, and what about as far as discipline goes, Rob? What type of disciplinarian are you as a father, and is it different than the discipline style that you grew up with? It's definitely different. Uh, I came from a loving family, you know, but it was a different time in a different place. And I'm more cognizant. I know, I, I guess, like, everybody should be treated the same, boys and girls. But I grew up in a time where, like, my brother and myself had different rules than my sister. And now, because I have all girls, it's easy. We treat them all the same, you know, so I'm not faced <laughs> with that dilemma. But... Um, you know, luckily I have good kids that I don't have to, like, you know, go to a point of discipline. Like, we do time out. We do that kind of stuff if it warrants it. But now they're old enough that they understand what they should do and what they shouldn't do. And we try to lead by example. We never hit in our house. We've never done that. I don't, I don't agree with it. I don't like it. Uh, at the same time, I know it's done you know, but I made a decision and my wife, we made a decision to not do that. We just feel like, you know, more can be accomplished by, by example than, than anything else. So we try to be loving towards each other and kind to each other so that that's what they expect when they grow up. You know, it's as a father of all girls, I want them to choose good husbands someday or partners and I want them to expect I want to set a good example of what they should expect in the future so that's how I try to parent and live 
yeah, great stuff. And I, I'm there with you. My youngest is my only girl, so it's. Uh, I do hope that they that she can look up to and see the way her brothers treat her, the way that I treat her, the way I treat her mother, and hopefully that by that example as well, uh, that will lead to her choosing a, a, a great partner later in life. And it is different for me. It is different. I mean, he, all four kids require a different style of discipline to begin with, but uh, I am definitely different with my boys than I am with my girl, and I kind of let my wife do the, the heavy lifting when it comes to uh, disciplining her. Uh, right or wrong, it seems to be working for us. Uh, yeah. and, and along – Along them lines, uh, uh, Rob, what are, what are the uh, top values that you're hoping to instill in your girls as they grow up? You know, we spend a lot of time together as a family. Family was always big in my house. I grew up in an Italian household. We had dinner every night together. We, you know, we got together and, and that was a big thing. And that's like with COVID, you know, a lot of families are spending more time together. And I think it's a good thing. But we did that before anyway. We take vacations together we go to the beach together we spend so much time together because we want to and you know i i think that family aspect is the most important part of what our, i'm teaching my kids is you know you watch out for your sisters your mother your father you're going to love you always and support one another and um you know they have friends of course and everything else but I always tell them that nobody will be there for you like your family is. So, yeah, yeah, good stuff, Rob. And what about as far as um, have the girls have they seen any of the um, have they watched any of the seasons of either Amazing Race or The Survivor? What do they think about you guys being on TV? Yeah, so just recently, like they've they've watched it, they've always heard about mommy and dad being on, but like the last two seasons, they're old enough now to watch and understand the older ones anyway. The younger ones, they like the challenges and stuff, but it was a big thrill for them to actually be able to come out to the island last season while we're out there and uh, actively, you know, come out and participate in the show. So that was a big thrill for them. Unfortunately, because of COVID, they weren't able to celebrate it with their friends because at that point, you know, school had closed when that episode aired. But uh but ultimately, that was like a really big gift for ourselves also to see them and see the joy of them enjoying it. So they know that mommy and daddy were on TV. They really don't care. <laughs> and you know what? That's fine with me. Like it is. Yeah, very cool. What, 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 what kind of plans you have for the future here, Rob? Any more reality TV in the making for you? You all done with that? You moving forward? Yeah. What's coming up next for you? You know, I spent 188 days on the island over the course of 20 years. I feel like I've gotten everything out of it that I ever wanted to and more. And I say that in a good way. But I, I truly feel like it's time to pass the torch to the next generation. And I'm good. I'm good with it. And, uh, you know, right now I'm just enjoying being home, working on my projects around, spending time with my family, and, you know, hopefully everybody's staying safe. Right on. And last thing I'm going to hit you with here, uh, Rob, I love to ask all the dads that I get on the podcast. You may have touched on a little bit already, but uh, what type of advice do you have for the new dad or for that about to be father who's out there listening? Just, you know, use your gut. Be patient. You know, it's going to be work. OK, you know, going into it that it's not going to be easy and you're going to have to make sacrifices. But I'm telling you, like, it's repaid 10 times over. I still go to the mailbox and come back and it's daddy's home you know <laughs> so it's awesome you're never you're never gonna get like the 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 investment return is so much better than what you put into it so do a great job and i promise it comes back to you tenfold yeah very well said i love the message this has been an honor for me i gotta say boston rob you're a first class father all the way and thank you so much for giving me a few minutes of your time here on first class fatherhood thank you so much i appreciate it man